So I've just finished all the filming for this video and it's a little bit all over the place. So bear with me, um, I'm going to go through the points, um, design decisions that were made, things to consider if you're making a pond and mistakes that I have learnt, well, I should have learned from and hopefully it can help somebody else not make the same mistakes that I did. So yeah, bear with it. There's quite a bit of information in there. It might be useless to everybody, but hopefully it'll be useful to at least one person. So it'll have done its job. Thanks. As always, thanks for watching. Like and subscribe. Um, I'll do my best in the editing and uh, bear with it. Cheers. Hey up, hope you're all well. Um, doing a quick video today um, on design decisions that were made, uh, mistakes that I made. Um, and the process that led me to this pond. Um, this was my second lockdown pond. I built one in May and quick re quickly realized it, it wasn't big enough, it wasn't what I wanted. So I built another one, this one. Um, but this, <laughs> mistakes were made uh, along the way and if I'd have done a bit of better research, um, and put a bit more time and effort into the decision making I might not have made those mistakes so I thought I would go over it today uh, and if it just helps one person who's thinking of building a pond next year then it's job done because it's certainly mistakes that didn't need to be made so yeah I'll stop waffling I'll quickly go on to uh, the, the main the main fundamentals which were um, deciding on the type of pond that you want I've alluded in one of my other videos I still didn't really know um, when I built this one and then, like I said being my second one I, I should have really put a bit more time and effort into deciding what kind of pond I wanted uh, the location and cost so the type um, the location and the cost are all intertwined uh, they're all um, linked to one another ongoing costs requirements all things that have to be considered specific features and ideas that you have yeah so I'll, I'll try and stop waffling so the type and location location for me if I could have had it near the house I, I would have done uh, it wasn't an option for me but it was certainly a consideration I think probably the biggest because it affects everything the location that it's going it affects everything yeah another thing to consider um, with the type and the location we'll put cost aside if, if you're going to build a pond you've got a cost in mind surely you, you know set yourself a budget but bear in mind my budget um, this exceeded what I had even when I designed it and jotted everything down that I wanted and priced it this still exceeded uh, exceeded the budget I'm going to do a video on the full cost that will come in the new year so uh, yeah like and subscribe for that put your notifications on because um, it is a, a question that's often asked is the cost of I'll do a running cost and a, and a total cost to build so you have to take into account um, that I'll use myself I'll use this um, my process and the mistakes that I made I'll use this as an example so this pond is located in the far corner of my garden so wind rain or shine to get to the pond I have to walk the full length of the garden so no hardship however you have to bear in mind that daily maintenance if it needs daily maintenance it's um, that's that's going to affect how often you want to come down how often you want to visit uh, given the weather in the UK um, how you're going to enjoy the pond so in the summer it's, it's obviously it's less of an issue I've waffled about um, enjoying enjoying the pond year round and that was the idea for this um, obviously in the summer it's not an issue you can come and you can sit down um, we've got we've got a seating area um, we've got seats over there as well you can sit and enjoy the pond however to, for year round we needed shelter so obviously the gazebo came into play so we bought the gazebo and I put that up 
bought the furniture, created the whole area. But this obviously has to be a consideration for anybody looking to build a pond. It, it's all well and good putting it in, but then the associated costs, if you like, if you are going to enjoy it all year round, you need somewhere to enjoy it from. You're not going to come down and sit in here if it's absolutely tonking it down. Sorry, Yorkshire, tonking it, raining a lot. A lot of the videos I've watched prior to building this pond um, spoke about big, bigger and biggest. Um, my scenario particularly, I thought I'd managed to avoid this. Um, my original plan for a pond in this corner, in this far corner, all I had was a shed. And it was a, a, an area of the garden we didn't visit at all. So my idea in May was a preformed wildlife pond. I think it was four feet long by two feet wide. I was going to stick it down by the shed in the corner and half dig it in and build up around it and fill it with water, put a little solar powered pump in there and let it crack on. Doing a bit of reading, I, I soon discovered that it probably wasn't the best idea water quality won't be best and then I, I might want to put a, a goldfish or two in there so after, after buying the preformed pond mistake number one if you like I'd already purchased it and the solar pump I never even got around to putting it in the ground as soon as it arrived I took one look at it realized it was too small not what I wanted I'd not done enough research so my second thought was I may as well dig it in, just dig one in, get a liner and create a pond. So I looked at the options and that's what I did. Um, this one was, I think it was 11 feet, maybe 12 feet by 3 feet wide, 18 inches deep. Hopefully if I've got some footage I'll find it and uh, stick it on an overlay. I absolutely love this little pond. It had a submersible pump with a little fountain feature. It um, had a small waterfall, but I absolutely loved it. The sound of the water, this was in May. Um, anybody in the UK might recall we had a really good May weather-wise. Um, so I was really pleased. First time I'd ever done anything. This pond cost me um, 650 quid to build. Um, I was really pleased fully landscaped, we used to come down, um, sit by the pond in the sun, listen to the water and, and look at the fish. We had a couple of orfs in there and some goldfish. However, mistake number two, big, biggest and bigger, or bigger and biggest. Absolutely even. loved the pond, but soon decided, in fact, it, it was less than a month decided that it wasn't big enough and it would be lovely to have made it bigger and create an entire area in the corner of the garden that you can enjoy all year round. So after um, some delicate conversations with the wife, we decided, yeah, let's do it. Um, we were still in lockdown as well. So by this time we were getting on to beginning of August. So I would had the pond a couple of months. So that's when I started designing this. And this one I did put a lot more design, design decisions into. I did a lot more research. But if I'd have done that research in the first place, I wouldn't have built the other pond or spent money on uh, the preformed and the solar pump. I was lucky I managed to recoup the money. I sold them on eBay. It seemed obviously during lockdown there were a lot of people building ponds, so it worked in my favour. However, the sensible way would have been to do this from the outset. Yeah, earlier I mentioned the big, bigger and biggest. Um, if you haven't seen this, it's um, I think it's the Aquascape team in America that coin it quite often. But it, it seems so true, just given my own experience as well. Um, and basically the premise is that as a pond owner you'll get your first pond and it's nice and big or you think it's big and then you quickly realize that you should have gone bigger um, so then they go bigger and then eventually down the line they will go biggest 
Um, I hope that makes a little bit of sense. I've already gone through the process myself and I've only had a pond three months. Um, definitely a consideration to make. Um, might help you a bit down the line. A few of the specific features to this pond, and, and these were all in my original design. I'm sure I have a photo, I'll try and put it up. It was literally done on an A4 sheet of paper and it changed multiple times. So again, that's another tip, I suppose. Um, unless you are just doing a, a rectangular koi pond with a bottom drain and the return jets, and you know, it's pretty standard. There's still obviously lots and lots to consider, but although it may change, it'll not change as much as something like an ecosystem, I don't think. Uh, just take the skimmer, for example. That wasn't part of my original design. But doing a bit more research when I sketched out the pond and realized how big it was going to be then uh, yeah I, I realized that without a skimmer it, it probably wouldn't work and yeah I, I believe that to be true but yeah specific features I put a, obviously a beach in so any creatures can crawl out that's the idea anyway um, covered in one of my other videos very briefly this is a feeding area um, and I'll stick a card up to the uh, circulation and flow video you'll see that this is designed specifically to be more still than the rest of the pond for feeding purposes we have had a little bit today look it's a bit milder and they're coming out for food first time I've seen them in four days um, this area you can see I hope you can see there's a step I'll point it out and then another step and then you can get into the pond but these edging stones are specifically flat so you can sit on those dangle your toes in in the summer i'm not going to do it in the winter i'll tell you but again that was another consideration uh space for the waterfall in the stream everything considered i made the best of the space that i have i am going to quickly mention um about the fish that you want in the pond as well uh, i suppose if you decided what kind of pond you're having, you, you may have decided on a dedicated koi pond, and it's self-explanatory. But for myself, I never had any intention of having koi. However, again, once I designed this second pond, um, it was a discussion and a conscious thought to make it deep enough that if I wanted to, I could put koi in and they would be able to live and survive happily. I'm so glad I did because I absolutely love the koi that are in there now. Hence the name, Ecosystem Koi. Um, and as I've said all along on my channel, it, it, it's uh, definitely an experiment. Um, but I'm so pleased that um, I made it, primarily it was deep enough just to house the fish. Yeah, as I mentioned, the, the first pond, I think it was about 18 inches at the, at the most, at the deepest point. So I wouldn't have been, well it certainly wasn't big enough to put koi in, but again at that time it's not something I've given any prior thought to. So perhaps if I'd have put more research in at the beginning um, and decided on what I wanted, firm on what I wanted, then I would have avoided building the other pond. One thing I will say, the experience of building the pond I thoroughly enjoyed. Um, this one and the previous one. I have also built another one uh, for my in-laws. I will feature that next year because it's already five months old um, and it's maturing really well. Uh, it's got some lovely goldfish in. It's much smaller but it came out really well. It's a lovely little pond so I will feature that next year just as a, an aside. Another specific the design feature was the bog. That's one thing I would probably change, I would make it bigger. If somebody's commented as well, uh, I couldn't agree more. Um, it's proved so beneficial. If I'd have, if I was to do it again, I'd make it bigger. I think I have enough room to do so if I ever want to, but uh, for now, it's staying exactly as it is. If you haven't considered a bog before, regardless of the type of pond, I suppose, um, it's one of the best features, I love it. Um, you can see now we are in middle of December and the watercress is still thriving everything else is dying off to be expected but the the beneficial 
part of having a small bog like this this is tiny um, so simple to construct and so simple to build and the idea and the concept just seems to make so much sense so again just from a, an experienced point of view it's one of the best decisions I made to put one in highly recommend it one of my most important design decisions was the uh, fish cave and that's been borne out in the last month really um, in fact in the last week the fact that I haven't seen the fish because the temperature has dropped a lot they've all been happily hiding away in the cave it's good from a predation point of view so if we get any pesky herons or anything like that they're not going to see any fish because they're all hiding in the cave especially this time of year and they have got somewhere to hide um, I have said in the videos prior that's the deepest part of the pond that whole back corner is a fish cave it's three and a half feet deep the deepest point um, so yeah they've got somewhere to hide and get away if you can afford a mini digger get a mini digger yeah that's whew. this was all dug by hand nearly killed myself on my own uh, if you can't get a mini digger in if you can't afford a mini digger get a mate round with a shovel anything um, there was a point I reached midway through the dig I thought it wasn't going to happen I was getting nowhere I got really disheartened um, yeah it wasn't good to be honest that was the worst part of it everything else I mean there's seven ton of stone in here at least seven ton um, and I lugged it all by hand one stone at a time that was fine the digging if you can get help get help if you can get a digger get a digger a consideration as well um, and it leans more to cost and location I guess um, is the landscaping around the pond I was very conscious I didn't want the pond straight onto a grass edge um, it, it's something I'd seen on a video somewhere obviously cutting the grass becomes a real pain then so that was the idea behind hard landscaping the entire edge of the pond so when it comes to cutting the grass I'm well away from from the water just a simple thing but yeah had to be put into the decision making and the design process a little bit on the landscaping um, it's not something I'd factored into the cost I'll be perfectly honest when I laid the cost out I didn't even consider it um, but all the landscaping just all the plants I went to the garden centre and said to myself yeah I'll probably spend 50 quid um, and get some plants for the edges get some plants for the pond and this little rocky bit if you like yeah it far exceeded 50 quid so it's a consideration to make um, because I suppose once you put it in you don't want to make it look nice and personal opinion um, for me the more plants the better uh, I'm really looking forward to next spring when it all comes back into bloom and, and starts blossoming properly so yeah just another quick consideration to make Yes, I mentioned earlier my original design was, or no, my original idea, I wanted a wildlife pond, I wanted to get more wildlife into the garden. And one thing I can say, of the ponds that I've built, the, the one prior to this and this one, and the in-laws pond, that very quickly it, it definitely brought the wildlife to the garden. I, uh, I have frogs in this one, I haven't seen them for a little while, but within a week of filling it they were here exploring in the bog um, we've had lots of dragonflies and the birds used to love feeding drinking on the waterfall and the stream so yeah within a matter of weeks that I would suggest any kind of pond any kind of water in the garden uh, definitely brings the wildlife in 